love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Fish in Soviet Union Part 2 Hello comrades and welcome back to Oshanka Show. Uh, we're going to continue our topic about fishing in the Soviet Union. And I want to share my memories about fishing when I was a kid and back in the northern Ukraine. And as I mentioned in my previous video, I had a real shock when I learned that Americans fish just to have fun, so-called catch and release. And when I saw that happening... When I came to America first time in 1995, I was thinking, man, it's the same thing like if you meet a girl in a dance club or, you know, somewhere else, and then you invite her home, she agrees, you know, maybe you spend money on her in a restaurant or something like that, or taking her to movies. You come home, um, you undress her, you know, here she is laying naked in the bed, you look at her and then you say, okay, uh, let me take you home now. I'm done. So that's kind of my understanding of catch and release. You go fishing and you let the fish go. So anyway, so we continue our story about fishing. So back in the countryside, uh, you could tell that people came from, from the city if they fish with a fishing pole. All the locals, like my grandfather and his neighbors, uh, they were fishing only with uh, fishing nets, which was kind of illegal, I believe. But since we were so far away, uh, kind of like middle of no nowhere, was hardly anyone patrolling. We actually had patrols that were looking for braconier. That's the word for the person who breaks the rules in hunting or fishing, you're braconier. But uh, all the old guys, old timers, they never used the fishing poles. They just... Uh, go in the morning and drop the fishing nets uh, in the rivers or creeks or lakes and then they come back same evening or next morning and they check their fishing nets uh, but we had one guy uh, my friend's grandpa he was a retired school teacher so he, he was kind of like a village intelligentsia so he was the only uh, old person that I knew who was fish, uh, fishing with a fishing pole and once again uh, it was a um, he had a cool, expensive telescoping pole, which was rare thin, and not just, you know, skinny tree out of the woods. But he fished only for okun. Okun, uh, or English name for the European perch. Um, that was a hard to catch fish. Like we rarely would catch it. You can only catch it by on the earthworm or having some other minnow little fish as a bait. Uh, he was going only for that fish and he would come, you know, use his uh, little uh, flat bottom boat and he will pick the deepest spots in the river and he will sit there for hours. So for him, it was kind of like spending time, but he was specializing only in the large size, big uh, perches. He didn't want to catch anything else. He would just put the maximum depth because perch is kind of like a He's not a bottom feeder, it's a predator, but he likes the deep, deep waters. And he will spend all day, um, if he has nothing going on at his uh, little, um, call it farm, it's not really a farm, he has a, everyone has a small lot. Um, it was a uh, 0.4 acres, not acres, point, uh, point 0.4 hectares, so sorak sotak, 40 one hundredths of the uh, hectare lot, he'll go and spend time fishing. So he was the only local person who was using fishing pole for fishing. Other way of fishing in the Soviet Union was uh, usage of so-called spinning. And it's funny, it just dawned on me when I was preparing for this video, I was like, oh my goodness, this is actually English word. Spinning from to spin. Because that was a short, flexible um, fishing rod with the large real so now everyone's fish and they have a small kind of this, uh, funky shape uh, fish uh, reels on it and that was a big round we call it katushka uh, made out of aluminum and people usually used spinnings 
um, for catching a pike. And pike, the only way you can catch is you have a lure as a spoon or spoon bait. So it's a shiny lure made out of metal, usually aluminum or steel. And when you cast it back to you, it's spinning and it looks like a fish. And that's what a pike goes for. Um, my cousin uh, who came to the village several times, uh, so he was also a grandson of my grandparents. That's it was his style of fishing. He would just come uh, to the river with his spinning and he would start just casting here and there, here and there, trying to see if he can get the pike um, hit on the lure. And he may bring one or two every time he does. So that's also be a sign that if you see a person with a spinning, you know he came from the city because locals weren't uh, uh, doing uh, spinning fishing. And uh, I was told the way back when my grandpa was still young, he did the same uh, fishing for uh, pikes with a spoon bait. But since back in, I guess, 40s or 50s, uh, they couldn't purchase uh, spinnings. He would just be on his boat uh, paddling super fast, as fast as he could. And he will have a fishing line in his teeth. So he will drag the spoon bait behind his boat and he would paddle as quick as he can to make the spoon bait, you know, spin. And then he would feel it if the pike hits it, it would, you know, yank his mouth and then he yanks back and that's how he was catching a pike. So that's how my grandpa was um, fishing for pike. Another little fish that you could catch using uh, udechka, using fishing pole, would be ruff. R-U-F-F-E. Or another name is pope. Uh, we call it yorsh in Russian. It looks kind of similar to perch, but it's uh, like it's also a little predator. But you, they don't grow big and they're always really slimy and pokey. So what most people did, Yorsh was really good uh, to make uha, which is like a fish soup. But you boil uh, rough first. So you boil just like you put the fish in there. You don't need to clean it. You just boil it and it gives that really good fishy flavor. And then you just toss fish away, give it to your cat or dog. Then you start cooking that uh, fish broth with good fish and you add carrots and other things and it's uha. You don't put potatoes. Uh, that's one reason I wasn't a big fan of uh, this fish soup uha because I like potatoes in my soups and real uha doesn't have potatoes. But this little fish yours, uh, you only can catch it using the earthworm and as I said, we if we catch it, we usually would let it go. So if you're not planning to make uha, you don't want to really use that fish. Another way you could use spinning, uh, so the fishing pole was that big around reel, is so-called peritashka. I'm not sure how to translate it to English, but the whole idea, you need two people and two spinnings. So you connect them, so you have a common fishing line between them. And then from that common fishing line, you have little uh, attach fishing lines with the hook. So it's somewhat like a fly fishing. Uh, so what we did, we usually I used, uh, the best would be to use uh, grasshoppers. Or if you can catch um, dragonflies, there's another great way of um, using as a bait. So you put the grasshoppers or, or the dragonflies on the hooks. Then one person need to paddle on the boat across the river on the other side, another bank. And so you stay on each side of the bank with the fishing line between two spinnings. Then you kind of slowly lower it towards the water and you start dragging uh, your bait right touching, slightly touching the surface. And that's when you can catch a nice size um, common rod and common roach, as well as um, some other fish like yaz. It's I-D-E. Eid or Ida Yaz. So that's a nice, usually sized large fish. And they only, usually they go for this kind of fly fishing. So this is Piritashka. 
And uh, I remember the very first time when we tried it, we failed really pathetically with my friend Dima. Uh, what happened, we kind of like estimated the width of the river and this is how much fishing line we uh, connected. And then we asked his grandpa uh, to take Dima across the river. So he did that. So Dima's on the opposite side of the river. I'm on this side of the river. We started, uh, you know, fishing. And my goodness, right away we had a really nice size common bleak. It just went right for it. So then you need to reel it one way or other because, you know, fish is in the middle of the river. Now you need to move it on one of the banks and take it off. And to our horror, we realized that we allowed the length of the fishing um, line just enough for the width of the river and nothing extra. So we couldn't move one way or another and we ended up standing there for like a half an hour with the poor fish hanging in the middle of the river. So then when finally his grandpa came back and brought Dima back on this side, we went back all upset and we had to redo the whole thing to make fishing line twice as long so we can move fish back and forth while doing this interesting kind of um, fly fishing called Piritashka. Okay, so this is, concludes the part two, uh, Fishing in Soviet Union. I hope you enjoy the show. As always, don't forget to put the like under this video, share with your friends, share on social media, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания, товарищи!